So here we're looking at some of the important Pythagorean formulas transitioned from R2 into R3. And as always, this is a natural extension of our knowledge from two dimensions. Simply add the Z component. So here we go. To begin, I want to let P sub 1 be the ordered triplet X sub 1, Y sub 1, Z sub 1. And let P sub 2 be the ordered triplet X sub 2, Y sub 2, Z sub 2. And these are two distinct points in space. So how do we find the distance between these two points? Well, we use the magnitude or that length formula. We use our distance formula. So we can say that D is defined as the big old square root of the sum of the squares of the difference of the coordinates. So here we go. We have the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So that's the distance formula in two dimensions, but in three dimensions we extend this and add z sub 2 minus z sub 1 squared. Again, that's the same formula that we've been using to find the magnitude or the length of a vector. Now, what about if we wanted to find the midpoint of this line segment? So real quick, just to help us visualize, if we think about the first octant, so we have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, and let's suppose that we want to find the distance between p sub 1 and p sub 2. So the, well, the distance is going to be the length of the line segment connecting those two points, which is what we found above. Now, what about if we want to find the midpoint of this line segment? How do we go about doing that? Well, it's the same formula that we know and love from two dimensions, but we need to incorporate the Z component here. So the midpoint formula is going to provide us with the ordered triplet x, y, z, where x, y, and z are each defined as the average of the components. So in other words, x is defined as x sub 1 plus x sub 2 divided by 2. The y component is defined as y sub 1 plus y sub 2 divided by 2. And the z component is z sub 1 plus z sub 2 divided by 2. And so this provides us with the midpoint of our line segment. So we now want to explore the formulas for both the equation of a sphere in three dimensions and the equation of a ball in three dimensions. So we say that the equation of a sphere is the set of all ordered triplets x, y, z that are a fixed distance of r, the radius, away from our center point. So this is the set of all ordered triplets x, y, z that are a fixed distance of the absolute value of r away from the center point. So we can say that our radius of the sphere is the absolute value of r and our center point is the ordered triplet x naught, y naught, z naught. And the equation itself is defined as follows. So we have x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared. And this is equal to r squared. So we incorporate that equals because the equation of a sphere is all of the points on the surface of our sphere. So here, let's incorporate a little graph here. So here is space, and we'll just think about our first octant. We have the z-axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis. And we are considering the equation of a sphere. So here is our beautiful sphere in three dimensions, or in space. And now we have the center point, which is x naught, y naught, z naught. And we should note here that this is, of course, such that x naught, y naught, and z naught 
are the scalars. These are real numbers. And now we have from this center point to any point on the surface is our radius length. And again, because our sphere is the set of all points that are a fixed distance from the radius, we're just thinking about all of these ordered triplets that are on the surface of our sphere. So what's different about the equation of a ball in three dimensions? Well, we say that the equation of a ball in three dimensions is the set of all points x, y, z that are on and within the sphere. So we'll use the same illustration here. We say that the equation of a ball in three dimensions is the set of all points, so the set of all arbitrary points x, y, z that are on the surface and within the sphere. So that are on and within the sphere centered at the same point so centered at x naught, y naught, z naught, with a radius of absolute value of r. So how does this differ from the equation of the sphere we just looked at? How do we incorporate the fact that these points are not only on, but they're also within the sphere? So we change this to an inequality. So we have x minus x naught squared, plus y minus y naught squared, plus z minus z naught squared, and that's less than or equal to the radius squared. So this is the equation of a ball in three dimensions. And that inequality implies that this is a solid region. So if we look back up at our illustration here, we want to make sure that we indicate that this is now a solid.